Hello everybody, this is Joe Estorino, CCIE number 24347, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the basic terminology around the EIGRP routing protocol. I know that uh, when you're first starting out, some of these terms get thrown around and they can be very uh, confusing to take in if you're not very familiar, so I thought I would uh, run through a video here. We're going to talk a little bit about the various terms um, with respect to EIGRP. And hopefully we're going to take a look at some real world examples here that kind of demonstrate the different things I'll be talking about. So first of all, you'll see in the diagram we've got two routers and a switch here, uh, R7, R8, CAT2. We're going to be running EIGRP here, a uh, real simple setup between all these devices. You'll see each device has a loopback address that it's advertising into EIGRP. So that's the topology we're going to be working with today. First thing I want to talk about is the EIGRP topology table. Let's talk a little bit about what it actually is. So when you're running EIGRP, um, obviously you're going to be talking to at least one other router. When you're talking EIGRP, any information you learn about routes from other EIGRP routers all that information is going to go into a, a big database called the EIGRP topology table. Also, when you go ahead and advertise a route in to EIGRP on your router, all that information is going to go into the EIGRP topology table so that you can send it to everybody else. So basically, it's a repository database for all the different uh, EIGRP information from all the EIGRP speaking routers uh, that you're connected to. So it's basically your information and all your neighbors EIGRP information. In the topology table you're gonna see things like obviously the routes themselves, um, where you're learning the route from, so what's the next hop or the neighbor you're learning it from, and all kinds of metric information that uh, will be helpful here later on. Let's take a quick look at the EIGRP topology table on router 7. Let's pop over to there. And the way you look at this here is show IP EIGRP topology. And that right there is our EIGRP topology database. Let's take a quick look at a few of these. So the first one here, we've got 8.8.8.8. P meaning it's, uh, it's in a passive state which is actually a good thing. It means that uh, we are not querying our neighbors for the route because we lost it. It's just kind of settled down. It's in a passive state. So 8.8.8.8 and it tells us here that we actually know it two different ways. We know it directly from CAT2 and we know it through R8. So we can see there a little bit of the, the information here obviously the prefix, uh, where we learn the route from. This is our metric information. So that's called our composite metric and our advertised distance. We also see a feasible distance. We're going to talk a little bit about all that here in a minute. But that's a basic idea of what a topology table looks like. So all the information we learned from EIGRP. Now one important thing to note here, this is not the routing table. This is just basically a raw dump of all of the EIGRP information going on around the network. So for instance, again here, 8.8.8.8, we learn it two different ways. And then what EIGRP is going to do is it's going to look at this composite metric here and here. And it's going to say, okay, which one of these is the lowest? Lowest metric is going to win. And whatever the lowest metric is, it picks that route and goes ahead and installs it into the routing table. So if we do a show IP route here on router 7 for the 8.8.8.8 .8, we're not going to see two paths, we're only going to see the best path which looks like here it's through Catalyst 2. Let's take a look at that. So here's the route and we see we only learn it in the routing table one way because again EIGRP picked the best path from the topology table. So let's talk a little bit about the EIGRP metric. You always hear the term composite metric thrown around. 
So what that means, they call it a composite metric because the metric is actually calculated uh, based on a mathematical formula that includes at least a couple different variables and can get pretty complex uh, if you want it to. Let me just bring up a, a notepad window here. This is the basics of it, okay? So we're not going to get really into all the math that happens here and how it gets reduced because that's not really what this video is about. But basically your metric is calculated on this formula here. You'll notice in there you've got bandwidth, delay, load, and reliability. You also have a bunch of these K values, K1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So basically that's how the metric is calculated. Um, now by default, these K values, by default, K1 and K3 are set to 1, and the rest of them are all set to 0. Now with those K2, 4, and 5 set to 0, if you reduce that formula, basically what it comes out to is bandwidth plus delay. So that's pretty much how out of the box it calculates your metric. Now you can go ahead and change these K values so that it does take into account load, delay, and uh, reliability. But right out of the box, it crunches the numbers based on bandwidth and delay. Should note also that it it's technically it's the minimum bandwidth and the cumulative delay along the path. Uh, and that entire value is scaled by 256. But we'll get into that in another video. Basically what I want you to know here is that the router crunches some numbers based on the bandwidth and delay by default to come up with a composite metric. Next we're going to talk a little bit about advertised distance. Now before we get into that, let's take a quick look at the composite metric here. Again on router 7, let's do a show IP EIGRP topology table um, 22, 22, 22, 22. So CAT2's loopback. And let's just take a look at this right here. You can see the composite metric. That's the metric that it came up with based on that formula. So next let's talk a little bit about uh, how EIGRP routes get propagated and we'll talk about advertised distance or also known as reported distance. Go back to the diagram. So let's say on CAT2 I want to advertise this loopback zero interface 2222-2222. What's going to happen is CAT2 goes ahead and it runs through that formula and it creates a composite metric. Then what it's going to do is it's going to send that composite metric over to router 8. So let's go to cat2. And let's find out what our metric was that we calculated. We calculated the metric to be 128256. Now we're going to send that over to router 8 and router 7. Let's check it out on router 8. So over here you'll see in the composite metric it learned from CAT2, there's your composite metric and then this number should look very familiar. Past the right of that slash, that's what we call the advertised distance. So that right there, that's what router, or that's what CAT2 sent up to us. That's what we call the advertised distance. And then what happens is, go back to the picture, so CAT2 calculated it, he sent it to us. Router 8 knows that is the advertised distance. Then he goes ahead and he takes into account the bandwidth and delay on his incoming interface here. And he adds it into the advertised distance to get the composite metric. So if we go back here to router 8, it got this value from cat2, crunched the numbers, and added in information based on the incoming interface and that comes up with this composite metric. So that's basically the advertised distance and how the metric gets passed. Remember when you pass a metric 
you only send to your neighbor what you know and then your neighbor he's responsible for crunching the numbers and adding in information about uh, the incoming interface so next we'll talk a little bit about the successor and the feasible distance so whenever you have information about a prefix let's take a look again here go back to router 7 here's a good example so for the 222.22 on router 7 we learned about it two different ways and like I said EIGRP is going to pick the best one so what the feasible distance is is it's basically just the best composite metric so you can see here that we learned it from cat2 with that composite metric we learned it from router 8 with that one which is much bigger so because this guy here is the smallest and best metric that is our feasible distance okay notice that right there feasible successor or I'm sorry not feasible successor successor the successor is just the router that you learned the best path through so in this case our best path our best composite metric is right here we learned that route directly from cat2 so cat2 would be considered our successor it's the next top router for the best path that's all the successor is now a feasible successor a feasible successor is basically a backup okay so in this case we've got a couple different ways to get there this is the best one so that's our successor but if that link goes down a feasible successor is right down here feasible successor is another way to get to the destination not the best way just an alternate way now to be a feasible successor you have to meet the feasibility condition okay so it's not just anybody it's a loop free or a loop prevention mechanism uh, the feasibility condition says that you can only be a feasible successor a route can only be a feasible successor if the advertised distance that was passed to you from the downstream router that advertised distance has to be smaller than your feasible distance so in other words here with this alternate route here's our advertised distance so that's what router 8 told us okay that number has to be smaller than our feasible distance which is right here notice that they're the same number in this case so in this case this would not qualify as a feasible successor route it's just another route in the database but if you actually look at show IP EIGRP topology without drilling into it and you look at the same route you'll notice here that there is no feasible successor it only has it here learned one way because it did not meet the feasibility condition on that alternate route so those are the basics about uh, EIGRP hopefully that clears it up for you guys um, there's also a blog on this topic covers a few slightly different things shows you some things in different ways using this same topology you can find that uh, blog over at asterino networks.com URLs right there on the diagram uh, so go check that out if you want a little bit more information We'll be digging into uh, a little bit more of the metric calculation and things like that down the line. But uh, hopefully this clears up the basic terminology and gives you guys a little bit better of an idea of how all these things work together. So until next time, keep studying hard, and I'll talk to all you guys later.